Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. And today we're bringing you another uh, unit overview for Flames of War. This time we're going to be looking at the mighty M10 tank destroyer from the D-Day book. Uh, so these are uh, US M10 tank destroyers. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can uh, field them. One is a dedicated tank destroyer company. And uh, another way is just adding a platoon of tank destroyers to your force. Uh, now, before we get into um, the, the forces and force building, let's look at the tank and see what this bad boy brings to the table. So here we have the uh, M10 card, unit card uh, from D-Day. And uh, we're going to see a couple things here. One, um, it's a tank unit and it is hit on a 4 plus. So it's hit 50% of the time. Um, it has a front armor of 5, side armor of 2, and top armor of 0. Uh, it has pretty standard um, sp uh, speed values for um, American tanks. Tactical of 10 inch, terrain dash 14, cross country 18, road 20. Uh, three plus cross check. Um, I believe you can add Cullen Hedgerow cutters to this. Uh, I think you can uh, attach that card to this unit. And then um, weapons, it has a, a three inch cannon, 36 inch range, uh, halted rate of fire two, moving one, anti tank 12, three plus firepower, no HE. And then it has a 50 caliber machine gun, which does give it some uh, AA defense and uh, a way to uh, uh, shoot up some infantry especially since that uh, the three inch gun has no the no he special rule uh, motivation wise it has a four plus so it's confident um, however it since it's kind of a self-propelled gun its counterattack value is six so that means um, if you get into a assault or you are assaulted and you make your counter uh, counterattack uh, check or test you're only passing it on a six that's probably not going to happen and your m10s are going to have to break off skill is trained for plus however um since it, since it is a self-propelled gun its assault value is five plus so again in close combat um, in the assault phase this is not where you want these guys to do they're only hitting um, their targets in assault on a five plus so you can imagine that uh, is not a good thing um but you know they can still do it all right so let's talk about um the good features of this tank first um the main thing the primary uh feature of this and the reason why you're buying it is you are adding um the big gun that it has the three inch anti-tank gun um, with a nice 36 inch range and um uh, anti-tank 12 3 plus firepower it's basically the same gun the 76 millimeter gun at least uh, flames of war stat wise that you find on the Sherman 76 um, it's it's the same gun same range same anti-tank value same firepower so um, you're adding that AT 12 and if you've been watching my unit discussions uh, particularly for the Sherman 76 um, we noted that um, you know any tank 12 is great because it threatens the likes of the um, tiger and the panther from the front again not a great chance you know front armor 9 versus any tank 12 but still a chance a German can't run around um, you know just ignoring your M10 tank destroyers you have them on the field it's something he has to address um, so that's a primary good thing. Another good thing is, uh, as far as machine guns go, it's got a 30, uh, sorry, a 50 cal. Only one shot, or sorry, only one 50 cal, which provides three shots if you're sitting still or two if you move. Uh, but it does have the uh, AA special rule. Um, and it, uh, you know, all 50 cals have a better anti-tank and firepower. So um, the 50 cal does I always think of it as triple purpose. One, it's uh, it has that AA feature. Two, it provides you a way to um, um, hit infantry that might be dug in. That five plus firepower um, is surprisingly effective. Uh, four M10s, if they are parked, can shoot uh, 12 dice of 
50 cal machine guns, which is pretty nice. Um, and the third thing is that can keep away light vehicles. Armor, um, you know, armor one or armor two vehicles aren't safe around uh, 50 cal fire. Um, now they're, they're decently protected, but they can't ignore the 50 cal. So um, that's a, a good feature as well. Um, the front armor of five is a good feature. I know it's lower than a Sherman's front armor of six or Sherman 76's front armor of seven, uh, but it is one better than it used to be. Um, so that front armor of five, you know, if you're at long range, which hopefully with an M10 you are, um, you have the equivalent armor of a Sherman and uh, it is possible to fire or to bounce any AT-10 or AT-11. Uh, still tough to do, but uh, possible. Um, the other thing that is special is it's a uh, special rule. It has the seek, strike, and destroy special rule. Now, uh, as a version three player, I loved uh, tank destroyers. Uh, tank destroyers were great. They had some silly rules that uh, some people um, could, could end up abusing the way that they, they would like uh, fade in, like a uh, Klingon bird of prey and, and uh, attack. Um, but, um, and, and it was a neat mechanic that ended up just getting abused. Um, but here they've replaced that with seek, strike, and destroy. So what that special rule does is it, um, a team may attempt to shoot and scoot uh, may attempt a shoot and scoot movement after succeeding in a blitz movement order. So basically it's a way to have them move up with a scoot and shoot and then you know back away you know if they have a hedge here at the start of the movement phase they might do a, a, a blitz move move up to the hedge to shoot and then if that blitz move is successful they can do a shoot and scoot and basically move out of sight so it's a way to pop into um, pop into view get your full rate of fire and then back out now I'm gonna say that that kind of uh, tactic while on paper it sounds great um, I can only remember maybe once or twice where I've been able to do that successfully. And the reason is with the blitz and the, um, and the scoot and shoot, you're, you typically do that on your skill or your motivation. Um, both of those are four plus with this. So you're passing your blitz on a four plus. So 50% of the time, and then you're 50% of the time successful on your scoot and shoot. So you need to pass two 50, 50 checks to pull that, um, pull that tactic off successfully and uh, in my opinion it just doesn't happen that often blitzing um, with these guys in theory sounds good but remember if you fail your blitz which will be half of the time 50% of the time um, they're at plus one to hit their targets um, plus they're gonna have to drive up and they're, they're halfway so uh, particularly if these guys are at long range that can be the difference between hitting a German on a, a six instead of a five or a seven instead of a, a six if, if they're concealed. So that's just something to uh, uh, keep in mind. Um, yes, they have seek, strike, and destroy, but it's hard to pull off. And um, a lot of times you're just better off not counting on it. You should never count on, on that one. Um, you should never count on any of the movement orders, but this one is particularly tough to, um, to pull off. and. Uh, I consider it a nerf to these M10s. All right, so that was talking about some of the um, uh, the, the pros on this tank. Um, now let's talk about the uh, cons. The cons would be, uh, well, we'll start over here again, um, the side armor and top armor. Side armor two um, is just paper thin. All it's doing is keeping rifles from um, hurting you, um, you know, infantry rifles. Um, but you know, that's probably good, but that's all it's doing for you. It's not doing anything else. And the top armor is zero. Um, you know, Sherman's have a top armor of one. Almost every tank in the game has a top armor of one, except for guys like the, the tiger, the king tiger, they have top armor two. Um, 
The top armor zero is because obviously it's it's a fun little open topped vehicle um, means that any kind of artillery is theoretically deadly to you um, you know in a Sherman you, uh, artillery with an anti-tank rating of two um, at best might bail you out but in an M10 it could destroy you um, and that's just something to keep in mind if you're you're a little bit more vulnerable to artillery fire and um, the, the higher the, the caliber the higher the anti-tank value of that artillery the more and more dangerous it gets for the M10 so you want to keep them uh, maneuvering so that's a to top armor zero is something to pay attention to um, the other penalties are the because he's a self-propelled gun he counts as a self-propelled gun basically your counterattack rating of six and your assault rating of five plus um, all that means it boils down to is you don't want to get these guys into assault um, unlike a Sherman which is kind of happy in assault um, it likes running over bad guys and all that good stuff uh, M10s don't particularly like it they only hit on a 5 plus they only counterattack on a 6 um, they're not going to hold against an infantry assault even if you win the round and you kill a couple of guys one or two guys with your assault rating um, you're not sticking around for the fight you're going to have to break off and um, you know approach it again um, and that brings you to this is kind of an obvious uh, thing and point about the M10 is it's good against enemy tanks and it's not so good against enemy infantry um, the fact that the main gun has no HE rule and just if you guys remember the no HE rule means you're just adding plus one um, to your two hit if you're shooting an infantry or, or gun team um, this is dedicated to destroy tanks and if you're shooting at tanks you're using them right if you're shooting at infantry something might have have gone wrong um, one of the worst things is taking m10s and then facing uh, an infantry company with no armored support um, and that that can happen every once in a while but for the most part most people love playing with tanks so bringing m10s is usually um, a good decision so these hit on a four plus is is good um, it means you're hit, being hit 50 percent of the time um, which makes it um, you know a lot more likely that these guys are gonna survive um, and particularly if you're at long range and in concealment you're only getting hit on sixes which is what you want now you can um, upgrade your m10s um, particularly I think it's your skill with the uh, desert veterans uh, command card so that's that uh, d-day american command card deck um, I'm, I'm still not uh, sold on the concept of these these decks of of cards giving you an option that arguably should have been in the book in the first place um, but i think i have it here oh here it is um, basically what this does is it increases your skill to veteran so three plus and it makes your assault a four plus um, so instead of trained four plus that's a three and it's trained of assault is a goes to a four plus um, you can do this um, if you have a tank destroyer company so you can't just do it if you have a one-off platoon in your your force and it's plus one point per unit so it's it's pretty cheap to apply um, if you're taking an M10 tank destroyer company um, but again really the the trained is going to help with um, I'm sorry the veteran in place of trained is going to help with movement orders things like that um, and an improved assault is always nice so if you um, you know if you take this and you put aside a couple of points to upgrade your M10 platoons with this um, that's not a bad idea so remember um, that there are cards that might help your M10 um, perform a little bit better on the battlefield all right so um, so now we, we have kind of an idea of the M10 and what it is as a unit what its stats are and what it does so next up um, let's just talk a little bit about um, 
the tactics and how you can utilize this on the field. So when looking at the unit card, we noted that it's good against tanks and it doesn't do that well against infantry. Um, one of the great things that M10s are good for is ambushing. Um, if an American player has some M10s in his tank force and uh, he's defending or has an ambush rule, these M10s, you can usually count on them being the ones in ambush, um, particularly if you're fighting a, a tank force. Um, in ambush, they're, they're pretty nice because they're going to get um, a shot off before they are uh, before the Germans shoot back. They're always going to get the first shot when they're in ambush. Um, in the previous version, they basically got um, an ambush regardless of the scenario. They just it was one of their kind of inherent abilities or an ambush like ability, I should say, before I'm corrected in the comments. Um, so these guys um, are great in ambush. Um, remember in ambush you have to be at least 16 inches away out in the open or at least uh, uh, what is it four inches away I think it's four inches away um, in concealment um, so it's a great way to add some direct firepower exactly where um, you need it a lot of times too in a scenario um, you might want these guys in ambush just as a, a decent counter you know let's say we're playing a mission where um, I have two objectives that I need to defend and I might have infantry on on one and another one's covered by some tanks um, and then I have these M10s in ambush what that means is I can sit back and kind of see the German direction, how they're going to deploy, which way they're moving, what's their primary objective going to be, and I can ambush these guys in a place to support that push so they're not kind of caught flat-footed on the wrong side of the board. Um, even if you don't have an ambush and you're the attacking player or you're doing something like a meeting engagement, they're fast enough, they're you know as fast as a Sherman, um, that you can get them where you need them, but having that ambush is, is helpful. If you're fighting a German infantry company with no tanks, well, M10s probably aren't going to be your choice to put in ambush. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the chance of you fighting tanks is probably going to be pretty high in a game of Flames of War. All right, so um, ambush is, is something great. Um, typically, I will ambush them right up against the hedge or the edge of the woods or something like that. Hedges are preferable to woods just because... Um, you know, in the woods, if you do a shoot and scoot to pull back, uh, you might fail your cross check and be caught so and still be able to be seen. Whereas with a hedge like this, you can still, if you make your shoot, scoot and shoot, you can uh, pull back without having to make a cross check. Uh, so <clears throat> one thing is looking at areas that your opponent leaves um, uncovered. Now I will point out too, this is kind of an advanced um, topic with ambush in general not just m10s is um, looking for places to place your ambush and conversely as the uh, someone facing an ambush learning how to uh, mitigate that ambush you know as a German player you know that those m10s are going to pop up somewhere how do you mitigate it and typically mitigation includes um, armored like a recon uh, infantry pushing forward basically denying uh, places what the enemy is going to try to do is deny you flank shots um, and <clears throat> that's going to be what you want to look for at, at long range if you can get a close range flank shot and ambush um, <laughs> you're, you're sitting pretty um, but um, so you're looking to um, make sure that the enemy doesn't deny you ambush spots um, now, in a typical uh, battlefield, well, one, you can only ambush in your own area on the board that you started in. Um, and, and typically, depending on how you do your terrain, there might only be, you know, three, four, five, maybe more uh, areas that are decent for uh, placing an ambush unit. So if the German player is denying some of those, maybe you hang back and shoot up that infantry, destroy that armored car uh, before you pop that ambush. Um, and it's something to do. As a German player, knowing that an ambush is coming, you'd want to make sure that um, your flanks are covered, 
and that when that ambush comes they're firing at long range at your front armor that's the best way to um, <laughs> mitigate it and it also goes to show you too um, when you're looking to place your um, tanks that um, long range and cover does sound does sound good but um, you have to look at the odds and we're going to talk about that next so this is and I talked about a little bit um, before when you think about M10s and you're looking at them initially you're like oh man these things are cool they've got anti-tank 12 I'm gonna tear the Germans up all right so let's say you ambush a Tiger tank um, you are 16 inches away so you're at long range um, that Tiger tank if he's out in the open you're hitting him half of the time so your eight shots result in four hits okay uh, the Tiger's front armor goes from 9 to 10 if you're firing from long range versus your anti-tank of 12 so of those four hits he's gonna get four armor saves um, only a one is going to be a failed armor save so when you think about you're rolling four dice looking for a one that's a little bit better than a 50 50 chance you're going to get at least one one but it's not a really high percentage that you're going to roll any ones um, it's just more likely you're going to roll a one than, than not um, and then a two might equal and bail out and three or higher is going to bounce um, if I have a platoon of two tanks, two Tiger tanks, and M10s ambush me at long range uh, from the front, honestly, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm a little worried, but I'm not too worried um, because again, it's I need to roll ones, and um, it gets even better if I can be in concealment when I take that shot because then instead of four hits, I'm looking at two to three hits on average. Um, one of the worst things as an American player when you do this ambush is you whiff. <laughs> and you've probably seen some of my battle reports where, where I do just that. I whiff on that, um, that initial shot. Um, and that's a terrible feeling, but sometimes it happens. And when you're playing the game, honestly, you've got to anticipate that. You know, when you put these guys down, expecting to take out a tank, you have to think to yourself, well, what happens if these guys whiff and don't destroy their target? Are they in a safe place where they can move or continue fighting where they are? Um, it's something to consider whenever you pop an ambush. Now at close range it gets a little bit better. If I can ambush this guy at close range, uh, the front armor 9 stays a 9. And now I'm penetrating on a 1 or 2 and possibly bailing on a 3. So half of the results are bad for the Tiger. But even then, you know, I'm still only hitting 4 times out of 8 on average. And maybe with those four shots, I'm lucky if I get two pens, let's say two penetrations. And on a three plus firepower, maybe one of those is gonna be successful. Odds are two, but yeah, it might be one, might be two. Um, so you're not really gonna wipe units um, with your M10 um, tank destroyers by themselves. Um, oftentimes, if I can, they need to be in support of another unit like let's say you already have a unit of Sherman's on the board or a unit of Sherman 76's or what have you um, adding these in ambush to that attack so now I have eight tanks firing on that target instead of four um, helps improve the the statistics um, so just keep that in mind that um, you know these are great tanks AT-12 is awesome it's the best the Americans can get in a tank at this point uh, but it's not the end-all be-all and don't um, you know over expect what these guys can do um, because they, um, they they won't wipe units off the table and just remember guys that things look a lot better if you can get that flank shot off um, if you're firing at the flank you will um, statistically perform so much better always be looking for those uh, flank shots uh, because something like a Tiger with a side armor of 8 um, still gets a decent save. You know, they, they equal on a, a 4. 
uh, but it's it's much better than at the front at long range um, ambushing German medium tanks or assault guns in this case like a stuck there um, are even better because the AT-12 just kind of goes right through their side the front's the only thing they have that's that's decent um, if your opponent is running just medium tanks um, M10s are, are great they're even gonna perform even better for you um, and a lot of times I just talk about the Tiger because let's be honest most players like the Tiger because it's so iconic and cool and powerful um, but Historically, more often than not, you'd be facing something like that, um, and um, in that case, the M10 is great in that kind of duel. So, just something to keep in mind. All right, um, next, let's just talk about how to field these guys. Um, there are um, two ways you can field them. One would be adding them as a platoon to um, an existing formation that you're building. So let's say I'm building an armored rifle platoon, uh, sorry, an armored rifle company, and I might want a, a platoon of M10s in support. Uh, that's a good choice. You're, I think M10s are a very nice complement to armored rifle and rifle companies um, because your uh, infantry are great at taking out other infantry and these guys are great at dealing with any heavy armor or medium armor that might show up um, so that that's a good combination um, you can also take them in well you can take them in support of anything in the book really you can take them in support of a you know a, a Sherman company Personally, I wouldn't do that because if I'm running a Sherman company, I want Shermans. So instead of these guys, I would be taking Sherman 76s, which would give me the same gun in a slightly more capable uh, package. Although you do pay more points for that. Um, but um, let's say I'm taking a Stuart company. Maybe adding a platoon of M10s might not be a, a bad idea. Um, you know, Stuart light tanks are great, but they're anti-tank sevens, nothing to write home about. Um, and if you face any kind of tanks, you're gonna want something to, to have. Um, so as support, these guys are great. And I think four of them, if I remember right, only cost like 16 points, um, which is a decent chunk of change, but for what you're getting, 16 points is, is pretty good. I wanna say too, like three Sherman 76s, I think veteran Sherman 76s are the same thing, um, 16 points. So, it, you know, I can buy three of these or four M10s, uh, which is 25% more, more firepower um, at AT-12, which is nice. Um, so I might take that platoon of um, M10s just to get that extra shot. Um, the other way to take them is the Tank Destroyer Company. So the Tank Destroyer Company is um, kind of an interesting beast. It, it needs to be supported by a lot of other things, but basically they have an HQ, and the only thing in their, their company really is um, either M20 security sections or the, the tanks themselves. You can take up to three platoons of M10s, and then you've got a security section, which is two um, M20 scout cars and a Jeep. Uh, and basically that's just, you know, the M20 scout cars have um, scout and spearhead and um, they have 50 cal machine guns. All of these other things have 50 caliber machine guns. If you're running a tank destroyer company, you have basically a forest of 50 cal machine guns in all your units. The M20 security sections are dirt cheap. They're like three points each for those three vehicles. So, you know, you're paying 16 per platoon plus three for each security section, um, plus like the one or two points that the HQ costs. Um, you really, your core formation is not that expensive. That comes into about what six, a little under 60 points. Um, and from there you can add um, infantry. Um, I would recommend infantry or armored infantry um, and uh, artillery to your list. Um, to taste. So um, 
look at that um, tank company. The nice thing about the um, taking those tiny M20 security sections is, uh, sorry I don't have any uh, of those models handy right now, is the fact that um, you can hide them so that if you start to lose, uh, uh, you know, M10 platoons, your, your core formation is not in danger of breaking as long as you've got a lot of those little cars zipping around. Um, the fact that the M20s offer you spearhead and, um, and scout means that uh, you can have more options as far as pushing forward your deployment area at the beginning of the game and, uh, you know, having these guys deploy someplace that uh, your opponent might not expect or a little bit too close for, to, for comfort. Um, so that's the, the two ways you can do it. Um, adding it as a support platoon to uh, another core formation or just running an M10 tank destroyer uh, company. Now I recommend you try both. Um, the, the downside of trying the M10 tank destroyer company, and I'll tell you it's fun, is that you need a lot of these guys. Um, you know, at least two platoons of these guys. Um, I'd recommend if you're going to go M10 Tank Destroyer Company, just get three platoons of these guys. Um, you know, just double down on, on what they do. Um, so you'd have 12 of these on the board. That's a lot, a lot of firepower. Um, and I guarantee if you're playing like a German medium tank company, a Panzer IV company or stud company, they will, um, they will be quaking in their boots. Um, and again, I said you, you'll have enough points to, to support fighting different kinds of companies. Adding artillery, adding infantry will help deal with those, um, you know, those, those pesky uh, infantry companies or Fallschirmjäger. And the fact that your M20 scout cars are covered in uh, machine guns as well, that's a great way to uh, keep infantry from just moving unopposed up the field. Um, you know, they're, they're just going to get peppered by 50 cals wherever they go because those those little uh, M20 security sections can just zip around. So it's kind of cool. Um, it offers a different way to play than taking a Sherman company. Um, when I play a Sherman company, I'm very aggressive. I'm looking at opportunities to charge my opponent, take the fight to them, get into a dogfight with those enemy tanks, uh, crush the infantry with my treads. It's a very aggressive play style and fun. The M10 uh, company is a little bit more subtle. Uh, these guys aren't good in assault, so you have to re rely on your support units if you're removing or assaulting someone. Um, they don't do very well when they're assaulted. They're going to break away, run away, so they're not good um, objective holders. Um, what they're good at is taking out enemy tanks. And, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. So there you go guys, that is a look at the uh, mighty M10 tank destroyer. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying these unit overviews. Uh, the comments I'm getting back have been pretty positive, so I think you are, but let me know down in the comments below, what do you think about the M10? Um, what are some of your greatest accomplishments and utter failures with the M10? Um, I have had good success with them, but it still hurts every time they ambush and they whiff. And that does seem to happen more often than not. But either way, they sure are fun. I think they're cool looking tanks. It's a great way to add a medium sized tank that's not a Sherman to your American list. Um, so if you're a, some kind of strange person that doesn't like Shermans, but wants to play Americans, the M10 is a cool uh, cool thing. And this is going to hold over till until we get the Hellcat uh, tank destroyer, which is my personal favorite uh, tank destroyer of World War II. But the M10 is pretty awesome. I will also say that these are great in mid-war. I realize this is talking about the M10 in um, the D-Day book, but I will add that you know I had this unit in my uh, Fighting First mid-war American book um, where they um, did, did fantastic. Um, in mid-war, when our armor is even lower, uh, these things are much more frightening. And Front Armor 5 at mid-war is actually, uh, you know, credible. Except for your random 88s and, and very expensive Tigers you're going to see. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, so consider that as well. Um, as always, guys, please um, check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. 
Uh, we'd appreciate always if you, you give us a follow over there. You can keep track of what we're up to. I try to post uh, stuff like that. Um, also, please do give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube. I click that bell to receive a notification when we publish new content. Um, we always appreciate that. That helps uh, us run the channel and it helps um, you know, keep regular content coming to you guys. As always, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.